G'day everyone, welcome to Grease and Gas, powered by Caprice Media. We're up here at uh, MOVE, the Museum of Vehicle Evolution. Come with us on a Grease and Gas tour of the museum. Come along, we'll have a look at this. We've got this beautiful blown XT two-door, the American version. It's got the combo pros on it. Really not a lot of information, but I think the car speaks for itself. I mean, that motor says a lot. A very, very nice car, that one. Not sure who owns it or who built it, but um, sure glad they did. It is, the, yeah, it's the American version. It's the two-door. Uh, bright white interior, which really suits this car. Lots of good chrome and yeah, very curious about this engine. It's definitely a Ford engine. Um, looking at the rocker covers, it's got Brodick's rocker covers and the shape of them says Cleveland, I reckon. There's no recesses in it like a Windsor would have for the bolts. Next to that, we've got this beautiful black 1960 Thunderbird. Huge car, huge car, taking up plenty of space here at the museum, but. Um, well, here we got. The 69 Z28, the RS hideaway headlight option, and the Endura front bumper bar. These things are rubber or urethane or something. Uh, it's got the correct 302 that got these cars into a particular series of racing. Um, it's got the optional bright yellow houndstooth interior, uh, gauges in the console, and it's also a four speed, which would make it a lot more fun. Um, love the American Racing torque thrust wheels on it and the black stripes. Got optional overriders on the back, back bumper bar. Um, yeah, just a great car. You know it's a favourite of mine. We've got this wild tea bucket here. Um, pretty custom front end, it's got no front brakes. Um, it looks like a four link style front end or hairpin style front end. Uh, still got the leaf spring across the front there. And our guess is it might have a Tunnel Ram 460 in it. If we get that wrong, that's how we get to interact with you followers. Um, but it definitely looks like a 460. It's a bit bigger than a Cleveland. Um, pretty basic trim, uh, lots of autometer gauges and a stereo that you probably wouldn't use. Uh, loosely defined exhaust system with mufflers, uh, big Mickey Thompson tyres, it looks like it's got a quick change rear end and Jag rear sus independent rear suspension in it. Pretty wild looking tea bucket this one. Be lucky to keep the front wheels on the ground, I reckon. This Hellcat Challenger was built from the ground up as the pace car for the Las Vegas NASCAR event. It was purchased by its current owner in, who lives in Shepparton and converted to right hand drive by JVA USA before being shipped to Australia. It runs a 6.2 litre supercharged Hemi by JVA, tuned to track only 109 octane fuel 
It's also a six speed manual. Some of the modifications that have been done to this car is a full track pack with a 5.3 litre Whipple supercharger and wide body package. That's right, I said Whipple. Uh, supposed to be making just over a thousand horsepower at the motor and around 800 horsepower at the wheels. And with 700 newton meters of torque going through a six speed manual, this would push you in the seat every gear change. Got the old 1962 Oldsmobile Starfire. This one's actually running a 349 V8. Uh, three speed high dramatic auto. Uh, the Starfire was produced in three non -conti continuous generations beginning in 1954. For the 1962 model year, the convertible was joined by a two door hardtop which featured a new convertible styled roof line shared with other Oldsmobile 88 coupes. Horsepower was increased to 343 horsepower. 1962 was the best sales year for this generation of Starfire with series of the hard top sales of the hard top coupe being 34,000 nearly 35,000. So great car with a lot of chrome that when you restore one of these, you would want to catalogue every piece of chrome as it goes out. I actually got to drive one of these TS50s, I think it was a green one that Street Machine reviewed. They've got a bit of a cam to them, They're being a big stroke, a 5.6 litre Windsor, and they do have a real cam idle to them, and very rare, the fair lanes are even rarer. Here we have the uh, well-known VE Monaro. I believe this car was partially a VE Ute at some point, and um, yeah, this has gone through a bit of a freshen up with Maskell's Customs and Classics there. It's a 700 horsepower LS in it with a six-speed manual. Uh, got the big billet wheels and what have you on it. Uh, it started life as a 2010 VE Malou Ute. Um, with about 10,000 k's on the clock and they decided to convert it into this Monaro you see now. Uh, it's running a Harrop 3600 I think, supercharger kit, Harrop brakes and custom wheels, I think they're billet specialty, or not billet specialty, show wheels or something. And yeah, he's driven the wheels off this thing. Uh, this 1974 LH Tirana was originally a 308 SL. The build started off as a 304 with about 425 horsepower and a Trimatic. 
The car has gone 12-3 down the quarter mile with the billet wheels spun off the line a lot, so traction's an issue. Things got a little more serious. It is now a Holden 355 stroker with about 550 horsepower and a trans brake equipped power glide. The car went through a nut and bolt restoration about eight years ago. The re restoration took about eight years and the car was painted by the owner's friend, uh, a panel shop possibly up here in Shepparton. Um, this 69 HT Monero is a fresh restoration completed by Maskell's Customs and Classics. Body and interior works completed in the restoration. Uh, certainly have brought this Monero back to its former glory. As with most restorations, some changes usually take place throughout the journey of the build. Uh, some creature comforts were included, of course, to make this a bit more user friendly. It runs an LS2 engine and for some added modern power and convenience. Uh, there's a matching automatic transmission, which could be like a 4L80 or a 6L80. And the big billet wheels and beautiful paint make it stand out. We've got the 74 Sandman HQ panel van, factory fitted with a 253, four speed and whatever Holden's version of saddle colored vinyl trim. Uh, beautiful yellow paint with the black stripes and what have you, just a great cruiser and looking at all the zinc coating and all that sort of stuff on the throttle linkages and what have you under the bonnet is a pretty faithful restoration this one. Before you fast forward it, this is no normal BMW. Uh, it's an E39 M5 converted to a ute by Southern Rod and Custom up here in Shepparton. This ute belongs to pro golfer Stuart Appleby. Would have been in Straight Machine a while ago and pops up every now and then, but uh, yeah, it's still got the five litre V8 and six speed manual that it came with and it will be a very unique car forever. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is Greg Maskell's first go at building a full-on show street machine car. It's a, I think it's an XR or XT Ute with a ZA, possibly Fairlane front. Pretty sure he built the 351 Cleveland in it with the blower and it's got the big old school billet wheels and what looks like tribal flames across the front of it and um, yeah we've just had it running and it still sounds really really tough and I think this was completed in 1993 and may have been featured in Street Machine in 2004 but um, yeah she's still a good car for its age and it's a bit of a throwback Thursday here. <laughs> 